Right, right, let's take a look at some social media questions. Oh, Everyone asking what you think of the RFU's decision to cut the championship club's funding in half. What do you think? What Shocking. would you guys do with the championship? Shocking. I, it's not necessary that they've cut the funding. It's the timing. Like, you you look at the, you know, and I, I've looked a little bit into it, played for Nottingham, hashtag the, the green and white hoops. Um, and a load of other players have, have come through the championship. Is there a club that you don't know the hashtag of? Well, it's I like hashtag I always, hashtag I don't know as if it one, is, I just presume hashtag it is. Green it, might, it might not be, but it is now. Um, the millions are going to hashtag it. Um, it's the timing, right? So you look at, you look at the, the the clubs in the championship. They are battling anyway. And again, I've tweeted about it, and people were like, "Yes, but you know, you're getting paid to play rugby. Like playing in the championship is playing at the coalface. So you you're getting paid minimum wage I'll for play the majority. I'll play, I'll play in the championship, not for minimum wage. <laughs> um, you get you're not getting paid a lot of money. I'm telling you now for what you're doing. Rugby is a tough, tough sport, and a lot of them players in the championship are professional. They are. Some of them will be professional. Some of them will be coaching on the side. And to have the funding cut, they're already underfunded. Like, they absolutely are. The amount of games that they play, the travel that's involved. Um, you've got to think, it's not just the players. It's the, the strength and conditioning. It's the chef. Um, it's the kit man. It's, you know, the coaches. Like, it, it's it's collect- I just can't believe that they've cut at this time of year. Like, Nottingham came out and said, they've already started signing players yeah. for next year. So it's like, well, hang on. Well, no, we can't actually afford these players now for next year because... You know, they want maybe a little bit more money or we're trying to add quality or we want to go, go up the uh, the leagues or we want to try and compete with Saracens and keep it under 80. Um, yeah, it's, yeah. it's ridiculous. It, the, the interesting thing, like, people are saying, oh, you know, it's going to be, it's now ring fencing. The 260 grand or whatever it is they've cut isn't going to stop a team's ambition of trying to get promoted. Because it costs, and Rob Baxter said it on Friday night, it costs millions. So you've either got the will and the desire to, as an owner, to get your team in the premiership as... Tony Rowe did many, many moons ago at Exeter. You know, since then, pretty much it's been, I think they said something like the last five or six years, it's been the same team who got relegated, bouncing straight back up. So, I don't think it's about the promotion. I think it's, no, it's about not, the masses. No, it's not. But, but for, for, for people that have said, oh, it's, good, it's basically ring fencing, that's wrong. Because, mm. you know, the, the difficulty now is the difference between a budget and sustainability in the premiership compared to what they're on in the championship I reckon it's 15 million quid that you're going to have to invest minimum to try and get structures around a club that could be a premiership standard, a squad, et cetera, et cetera, built up. And I'm not talking about the salary cap. I'm talking about the whole fundamental. Look at Ealing. It, the, the Ealing owner for Trail Finders, he's got a huge amount of money. But does he want to put 20 million quid in or how much it is? Their stadium isn't good enough to play premiership rugby yet. So the cost of that. So it's not just about a playing squad, it's everything around it. And so the 260 grand that the RFU are cutting isn't going to prevent a team getting promoted. But like Jim says, it affects people's lives. And in reality, and a lot of the championship clubs do have a very strong argument that the RFU keep all the money that's generated from that championship. So the sponsorship rights, the TV rights, a lot of other stuff around it. And then they distribute it to the clubs as they see fit. And I don't know the full ins and outs of it. But, but, but why... Whereas PRL Premier, Premiership Rugby Limited run the Premiership, but I don't, I just don't get why the last last minute it is last. Yeah, minute. no, that, that, that's well, the thing. But and there's, it's, there's, nothing, there's, there's new people at the helms. So there's a new CEO, obviously. Um, Conor O'Shea's gone in there with his role as well. Performance and director. Then, you know, it, it's it's like there's two new people gone in, and we've got to make a change. We've got to make a statement yeah, for something but, because I mean, the RFU are trying to cut costs. Well, this is the, this is what it comes down to. So they, I'm not defending it, by the way. Yeah, but I'm just saying. And it yeah. is, it's people look at professional rugby and they see Finn doing laps of the Champs Elysees with Gregor in his Lambo. Lamborghini, yeah. smoking out the window. Um, that's not what it's like. Like, we've joked about it before that that championship, like, it's like a professional rugby player graveyard. It is proper mm. professional rugby salaries. Uh, boys living in Jersey were getting paid peanuts. I don't know how they even survive. Uh, you hear stories all the time about boys getting injured and clubs just not paying them. What are they going to do? They don't have money to go get a lawyer. And you hear lowly, that is proper, proper um, professional rugby in there. And it's a shame to see uh, that yeah. they're, they're going to have even less money to operate a club. But it's half. This is like, I just I, I just don't get it. Like, there are a few, okay, if there is a money issue or they need to make changes and, you know, that maybe they want to invest in the women's game, great, if that's what the, the road that they want to go down. But I'm just like, literally, the foundations, right, 
is it the foundations of grassroots rugby? I don't know. I'd say it's the soul. I would say there's a large part of rugby's soul lives in the championship. That's what I think. And it's, it's a last chance saloon for players. It I, is, yeah. Even I'd be really interested to see how many Irish players for the past 10 years haven't got their contract renewed to the provinces and have gone over and just thought, you know what, I'll, I think of guys like uh, Michael Heaney who's do, going right at Worcester. He went to Doncaster and they go upwards and onwards. You know, this is how, this is where people go. They're not, you know what, I'm not quite convinced I won't end up being a pro with the last roll of the dice. So from an Irish point of view, it would be sad to see it sort of dwindle even further. It's like Ian, uh, Ian Witten and yeah. Steenson. They did it with Exeter, Exeter. Irish boys. Uh, but then I, I think one of the complaints was about them trying to produce players that will go into the Premiership and go into play for England. And I think what has changed over the last four or five years... The academies. Yeah, yeah. is the size of every Premiership club's academy because they've got more money to invest in it. So they focus on the, all those players. So these championship clubs and it's, it's kind of a hard thing for those championship clubs to do because premiership academies have got much bigger and they've got more funding therefore they're producing the players whereas the championship clubs are a bit of a feeder and you know you can go on loan to them or you know you might yeah, get there's a relationship between clubs with them and, 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 that's, and that's the hard point those championship clubs don't have the funds to have a big academy whereas if you're a 16 year old kid who's pretty decent and you live in Bedford you're thinking I'm going to go to Northampton Saints Academy. You're not thinking Bedford Academy, are you? No. And that's the you know that's where it's very unfair, I think, on the championship. Club. I just don't think I just don't know where it's going. Like that's the thing. So they've lost half the money, and who knows? 